So Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned this tabaqat, these tabaqat al-thalatha, these three levels of people. Allah mentioned the level of the Sahaba. Or Allah's Messenger rather mentioned the level of the Sahaba. Then the level of the Tabi'een. Then the level of the Atba'u Tabi'een. And because they are people in the army fighting the enemy who are in one of these three groups, they are given victory by Allah upon the words of Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who does not speak from his desires. And this tabaqat, this level of three generations are also mentioned in the hadith. خَيْرُ النَّاسِ قَرْنِي ثُمَّ الَّذِينَ يَلُونَهُمْ ثُمَّ الَّذِينَ يَلُونَهُمْ The hadith in Bukhari and Muslim <coughs> from Abdullah, reported by Abdullah, from Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, that the best of all of mankind is my generation, than those who come after them, than those who come after them. So the virtuous generations are three. The Qarnu Sahaba, the generation of the Sahaba, then the generation of the Tabi'een, then the generation of the Atba'u Tabi'een. These are the three generations. Tabi just means a follower. Atba'u Tabi'een, the one who follows the Tabi'een, who came after the Tabi'een. Then we have the Manzila of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. The level of the Sahaba and their virtue radiallahu anhum. So the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, that they attained a level of honor and nobility that was not achieved by other, anyone other than them. And that is because they achieved, or it was, it was achieved for them, or it was given to them. An affair in the dunya, or there was an affair in the dunya that was given to them, that was not given to anyone besides them. And that is, وَهُوَ أَنَّهُمْ That they, رَأَوْ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وسلم, That they saw what was given to them of honor that was not given to other than them, that they saw the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, or they met him. وَسَهِبُوهُ So they accompanied him, and they made jihad alongside him, and they defended and protected him. And they took the knowledge of the kitab and the sunnah from him. And they conveyed the two of them to the rest of mankind. So they, meaning the sahaba, they were the wasita. That they were the body in between. The messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the rest of mankind. So they took from the Messenger of Allah, and they conveyed it. They were the conveyors. They were granted this great bounty, this immense profit, and this mighty reward. And that is the honor of accompanying, of the suhba of the Messenger of Allah Wasallam. They were given this honor and respect due to them accompanying the Prophet Wasallam. So they heard the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ with their ears. And they saw him, his character, his person with their eyes. So they were given a bounty and a treasure that was not given to anyone besides them. So the people, meaning after them, they know the book and the sunnah. Or they do not know the book and the sunnah except through the path of the Sahaba radiallahu anhu. Otherwise, we don't know the book and the sunnah. It was the Sahaba that preserved it and they carried it to us. So therefore, whomsoever finds fault with the Sahaba and criticizes them 
he is in reality criticizing the book and the sunnah just as has been just as has been narrated by al khatib al baghdadi abu bakr al baghdadi al shafi'i the great imam who died in the year 364 in his book al kifaya fi ilm al riwaya with an authentic isnad authentic chain of narration from abu zur'a al razi rahimahullahu ta'ala who died in 264 after the hijra that he said if you see a man belittling a single one of the companions of allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fa'lam annahu zindiq then know that he is a zindiq he is a heretic and that allah's and, and and that is because allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to us was truthful he was true and he was truthful and the quran it is true and it is truthful indeed it was the companions of allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who conveyed to us this quran and they conveyed to us the sunna and these innovators they wish to injure our witness they wish to injure our witnesses so as to falsify the book and the sunna wal jarhu bihim awla so attacking them and speaking ill of them who criticize our who criticize the sahaba so speaking ill of them and criticizing them is more befitting wa hum zanadiqa and they are in reality the heretics meaning end of the speech of imam abu zur'a sheikh abdul muhsin al abbad hafizahullah he said meaning that those who criticize the sahaba radiyallahu anhum are in reality are in fact criticizing the book and the sunnah because attacking and speaking ill or criticizing the conveyor of the knowledge is criticism of that which is being conveyed just as the disputants or two disputants who go to a judge so a claimant the one who is the one who is making the claim he brings his witnesses so the one who is making a claim against he criticizes his witnesses to us to, so as to falsify his claim so that he cannot establish his proof after his witnesses are proven to be unreliable that is because criticism of the witness is criticism and nullification of that which he has witnessed attack the conveyor is to attack that which is being conveyed and for this reason the ashab of allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam hum khairul qurun the companions they are the best of all generations bal hum khairul bashar ba'd al anbiya wal mursalin rather they are the best of all of mankind after the prophets and messengers because لأن خير أمة أخرجت للناس أمة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم and that is because the best of all nations raised forth for mankind is the nation or the umma of Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم and the best of the umma of Muhammad are the companions of Allah's messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم Thereafter, we have the virtue of the generation of the Tabi'een and the generation of the Atba'u Tabi'een. 
And you know now, my brothers and sisters, that reviling any one of the companions or allowing them to be reviled or agreeing with their revilement is the trait of the Rafida, the enemies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And to belittle them or to belittle a single one of them is considered to be rough, is considered to be tashayyur, is considered to be a rejection. And she's considered to be from the filthy beliefs of the mubtadi'ah, those innovators who revile the companions of Allah's Messenger وسلم, and the Shia. So when a mubtadi'ah, fasiq, comes and criticizes Muawiyah, radiyallahu anhu, the khal of the ummah, as Ibn Abi Dawood, as Sijistani mentioned in his ha'iyah, in his lines of poetry, where he collates the aqidah of Ahlu Sunnati wal Jama'ah in somewhere between 34 and 40 lines of poetry. Within there, he mentions that as for Muawiyah, then he is the maternal uncle of this ummah because he is the brother of one of the wives of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa so that since his wife is the mother of the Ummah, then the brother of the wife is what? Your uncle. He is the Khal. He is the maternal uncle of the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he is the Katib of the Wahi. He is the one who penned down the revelation. And the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam appointed him to do so. Muawiyah radiallahu anhu is, narrate, is narrated from in all six books of hadith. Bukhari, Muslim, Abu Dawood, At-Tirmidhi, Al-Nasai, Ibn Majah. He is narrated in the Masaneed, Musnad of Ahmed, and the rest of the Musnads. Likewise in the Musannafat, of Ibn Abi Shayba. And likewise in the rest of the books, Mustadrak of Al-Hakim, the Sahih of Ibn Hibban, all of those great scholars of Hadith narrate from him. His name is specifically mentioned in the books of Aqidah as a measure between those who love the Sahaba and those who hate the Sahaba. He is from those singled out. Because the enemies of the Sahaba, they will attack him. As they attack Amr ibn al-As. And other than them. So when this Khabith, Mubtadi' innovator, carrying rancor, hiq, and hatred and ghil for the Sahaba radiallahu anhum says, that yes, Aisha and Muawiyah were upon batil. That they were upon falsehood. This Khabith, Mubtadi' Muhammad Hijab. That he agrees with the Rafida. Yes, I agree they were upon batil. Talking about Ummul Mu'minin Aisha radiallahu anha. A Siddiqa, Bintu Siddiq, mother of the believers. No excuse in front of that Rafidi. Agrees with him. And then he goes on to say the same thing about Muawiyah radiallahu anhu. Oh, as long as you don't call them kuffar, revile them. Say what you want about them. Just don't say that they're kuffar. So this Rafidi corners him if they were upon batil and if they were upon falsehood then how can we trust them? Then you hear him stuttering and trying to use logic and reason. Ya Khabith 
that you allow the Sahaba radiallahu anhum to be insulted and reviled in front of you and you agree to it and you claim to be a person of Sunnah and you claim to be a Sunni and the same thing that you said about Sheikh Rabia when you insulted them but if the Sahaba are nothing to you, then who are the scholars like Fawzan and your revilement of Fawzan and your revilement of Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab and his books that you see no good? That you think that you can write one hadith with some notes in it is better than a hundred Usul al of Sheikh, Sheikh al Islam Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab. You narcissist. You think that the universe revolves around your greatness, Ya Khabith. Everyone else, even the honor of the Sahaba, is nothing in your eyes. Yeah, Tayyib, he says, yes, I agree. Okay, good. Ya Habibi, he says to this Rafidi, who deals with him. And actually finishes him. Why? Because you're using logic. He's using rough, both of you, upon misguidance. Where's the nusus in all of this? Where's the statements of Allah? Where's the hadith of Allah's messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? But he is your habib. Repeatedly calling him habibi, habibi. Yeah, he's your habib. Because ahlul sunnah. And not those who are beloved to you. That which you accuse in your defense of the Jahmiya and the Mu'tazila, in your revilement of Ahlul Sunnah and revilement of the Muhaddithin of the Salaf and the positions of the Salaf with respect to the names and attributes of Allah, that you mock them and you revile them. What is that except the behavior of the Zanadiqa of old? You have resembled them, Ya Khabif. Mubtadi' and whomsoever agrees with him after knowing this about him is likewise a person of bid'ah sahib hawa this is the deen of the sahaba that they are playing with this is the deen of the tabi'een and the atba'u tabi'een men that were given victory because of their presence in battle is there anyone among you the prophet sallallahu said Anyone among you who has accompanied those who have accompanied those who accompanied the Sahaba. Because of that they were given victory, the Atma'u Tabi'een. Then what about the Sahaba? Allah gave them victory for being present in the battle. Why was this sharaf, this honor and respect given to them? Because they saw the Prophet, they met the Prophet. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And you turn up in 2022. You turn up 14 centuries later with your arrogance and pride, your kibber and your haughtiness. And you regard them to be your beloved ones, those who revile the Sahaba. They are untrustworthy. Who Aisha is untrustworthy. None of you would accept that speech against your own mother, even if it was true. Even if it was true, you wouldn't say, leave, you'd say, leave my mother alone, make dua for her. Don't say anything about my, what about the mother of the believers? You revile the mother of the believers, only a munafiq would revile the mother of the believers, Aisha bint Abi Bakr. A Siddiqah, the truthful believer she was. And these are the people who are getting all of these followers on social media shows you the worth of social media. It shows you what social media is. That a Khabith, arrogant, haughty, mutakabbir, innovator, will revile and curse 
The Sahaba, so long as you don't say that they are kuffar, ya Habibi. And you're going to get a following. La ilaha illallah. Remember the statement of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, radiallahu anhu. O oh, Ummah of Muhammad, how quickly you have run to your destruction. That was in that time for people counting stones. This is destruction. And then they wonder why the Ummah is in the state that it's in. And then they wonder why the Nasr of Allah has not come. Where is the aid of Allah, they say? The aid of Allah will come with these khubatha, with these shayateen, with these dajjajila of the ummah. These liars and pretenders. That everyone, even that rafidi is safe from your tongue. But Shaykh al-Islam Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab is not. You revile al-Albani. But the rafidi is your habib. You revile Sheikh Rabi'ah. But the Rafidah are safe and they are, he is your Habib, your, your beloved one. Aisha is not safe from you. So Ahlul Khair, the people of good and the people of piety, the people of taqwa are not safe from you. The awliya of Allah are not safe from your heart. You have got ghil. You have got rancor in your heart for Ahlul Haq. You hate them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you what you deserve. Shaykh Abdul Muhsin, he mentions in conclusion, then after the Qarn of the Sahaba, after the generation of the Sahaba, comes the generation of the Tabi'een. Those who did not actually see the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but they saw those who saw the Prophet with their eyes. So they achieved this virtue. Look at the virtue. Just for seeing Aisha, you are given virtue. And you, Khabith, want to attack. Just for seeing Muawiyah, Allah gives you virtue. You are virtuous because you saw Muawiyah and you believed in that which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came came with Allahu Akbar so this is honor and it is known that that which has come from the Sahaba did not reach us and was not known to us except by way of the Tabi'een they are the ones who narrated from the Sahaba they are the ones who carried the knowledge of the Kitab and the Sunnah from the Sahaba then after them after the Tabi'een came the Qarn al-Thalith, came the third generation, and that is the generation of the Atba'u tabiin And they are the ones who saw, those who saw the companions, those who saw, the ones who saw the companions of Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So they became the third generation in virtue and precedence over other than them. And Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said concerning them, خَيْرُ nas qarni thumma الَّذِينَ يَلُونَهُمْ ثُمَّ الَّذِينَ يَلُونَهُمْ I don't see you being mentioned in there, Muhammad Hijab. You are mentioned against those whom Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has mentioned, ثُمَّ رَفَدَ مَنْ بَقِيَ as occurs in one narration, then ka'annahu, that it is, it is as if the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam rejected other than them. You are rejected. Because you are not from the Sahaba, not from the Atba'u Tabi'in, not from, not from the Tabi'in, not from the Atba'u Tabi'in, nor from those who followed them in goodness. You are an enemy of the Sunnah. Enemy of Ahlul Haq. And those who follow you likewise. Unless they are ignorant, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide the ignorant ones. Then, we have the virtue that is specific for individuals amongst the Sahaba. 
So then those specific virtues are for individuals that Allah's Messenger وسلم, has singled out or Allah has singled out. And likewise groups amongst them, like the Muhajireen, like the Ansar, like those who gave the Bay'ah of Ridwan and other than them. Individual groups, the ten who were promised paradise and so on. And from that which has been narrated and reported from the muhaddithun ahlul hadith nahnu ahlul hadith na'am we are ahlul hadith may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our adherence to the hadith and that which has come concerning the virtue of individuals amongst the sahaba is that which has been presented here from the collection and research of Al-Imam Ibn Majah Rahimahullah Ta'ala in this chapter the chapter of the virtue of the Sahaba or the virtues of the Sahaba and the first of them is the virtue of Abu Bakr Siddiq and that's why the next, the first heading in this chapter if you turn over the page is the virtue Fadail Abi Bakr as Siddiq, the virtues of Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu anhu? So he begins, meaning Ibn Majah, with the virtue of Abu Bakr, then Umar, then Uthman, then Ali, because that's the order of precedence, that's the tartib. And that is the way of Ahlul Ilm, that's how they deal with the Sahaba. They mention the most virtuous first. And then they move on, even though all of them are virtuous, but some are better than others, as we have mentioned. So the first of them who is mentioned is the first of them in the Khilafah. And he is Abu Bakr. So the Afdal, or the best of the Khulafa al Rashidin is Abu Bakr, then Umar, then Uthman, then Ali. Radiallahu anhum. And they are the best of all of the Sahaba. And they are the best of this Ummah. And this Ummah is the best Ummah brought forth from mankind. Those who follow the way of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from amongst them. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu ala nabina Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een.